Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. As the title suggests, going to do a quick um, and dirty easy way to uh, create a custom static mesh, or skeletal mesh in this case, from a BSP geometry. And using a, uh, a project that I've got just for doing these quick clips, uh, going to keep this short to the point. You see, I got a third person example set up, a couple floating stairs that I've created, that kind of stuff. Um, but the, the whole purpose of this is to create something. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new map. Default. And as I usually do, get rid of those guys, these guys. I need them, but we don't need them up here. And as always, create a new folder, map, shit. Take all your map shit and throw it in there. Nice and clean and neat. And then we're going to take a BSP geometry of a box. Going to go ahead and do 0, 0, and negative 5. Going to change the X, Y, and Z on this to 2,000 by 2,000 by 10. And we're going to call this our floor. You shove that in the map shift folder, minimize, good to go. Save all. And we'll call this our build map. If I learned how to spell correctly. All right, so there. We've got a place to actually construct our stuff that we want to build. And another thing that I will do is take my player, move him back, and we're going to go ahead and save all, save selected, I'm going to make sure all my snapping is back on, and we'll do negative 750, 0, and 115, actually I'm at negative 750, but whatever, so now we we'll start of course, I got that stupid mouse cursor glitch. And you know, I hate that. So I'm going to fix that really quickly. Find a clear spot. Event, begin, play. This is mostly mandatory for people who have OCD problems like myself. Set input to game only. Get player controller. Set show mouse cursor. Leave it unchecked. And compost and save. That's going to take care of that problem. So now when I ever hit play, um, what character am I using? Oh, okay. Well, we'll do third person game mode. And hit play. There we go. Because we didn't have a game mode selected. Now we can do save all, and we're ready to begin. So I'm not going to go ahead and do a whole lot of on the creation of BSP geometries on this. Just want to focus in on. Okay, we have a BSP geometry. We want to turn it into something else. Um, in fact, I don't even have any materials in here. Um, Just so I've got some materials, I'm going to go ahead and add starter content. Just so we got it. So I can have some materials to work with. Doesn't take but just a moment. Shouldn't have to do this quite a few times, so shouldn't need a uh, refresher on this if you're a regular viewer. Faster, 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 faster. Thank you. All right, so materials. When you're creating your BSP geometries at first, go ahead and select the material that you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and just use um, British steel. So I grab a BSP geometry, I throw it into my map. The first thing you, that I always do is zero and zero so that the, um, the X and the Y puts it dead center in the middle of my map. 
because when I start adding in other parts for it, if I need to do other parts, I can zero them out and I have a good starting point to work with. Um, instead of just being a straight cube only, um, let's just make this a really down and dirty skeletal mesh for whatever. You know, for this case, we'll make it into a car. Now, I can actually take this same skeletal mesh or this same BSP geometry and convert this into the majority of the car as needed with a single BSP geometry. I'm not going to sit here and spend an hour creating this ultra cool looking car. You can do it however you want to. You can do it in external programs, but I'm showing for prototyping, being able to do this inside of UE4 without having to go out and do anything else. So what I'll do is I go into the geometry editing. In fact, actually I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to reduce the Z height to 100. And change the Y to You know what? I'll leave it at 200. We'll make the width of the car a little bit wider. So we'll change the X to 300. And if we take a look at it, eh, it's a little too wide. So we'll do. Just leave it at 200. I'm not going to get crazy with this. Um, but I can go into my geometry editing and I can click on the face, click on extrude. Just go ahead and click on don't show this again and close. Now I'm going to drag this out. Mm, whatever, it's right here. And I'll do the same thing here. I can drag this out. That's lovely. And we can do this. Actually, undo on that one. What I'll do is click here, click here, click here, and click here. So I can grab these four points, and I'll just pull this up. And this is absolutely a terrible looking car. Then I'll grab this face, go back to extrude again. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll go back to here and extrude that out a little bit. Beautiful. Um, so I don't have to uncheck on the extrude and just check off of it and do what I need. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this making it beautiful. We're just making something for the example. Now, all the things that we're going to need to do with this we can do now. Uh, if we need to add in, well first off, come back off of here, let's fix our materials, and we already have that selected, so let's do select, select all adjacent surfaces, click on display the materials, and there we go. All of them are back to the original ugly metal color. So if we want to add in the wheel wells, then that's where we would go ahead and make sure, again, we've got that selected. Go to our BSP geometry and grab a cylinder. We need the outer radius to be a lot less. And let's make this around. We'll just do 50. Turn this into subtractive. I 
Again, I'm not trying to make a beautiful car. Control C, Control V. Grab both of these. Control C, Control V. And there, we got our basics for our car. This is going to be good enough. <laughs> Now, when you're doing BSP geometries, you know, you can now go back in here and if you want to extrude everything and spend some time making this look nice, go right ahead, but that's not the purpose of this video. If you want to change, like, okay, I, I want this to actually be a different material, um, you can change that material. You can also see that it's going to reflect that in, but you can also do select all adjacent surfaces and display two and change that one just so we have a contrasting color and that's only affecting the um, sh the actual cylinder brush that, we, brush that we used for creating that and by selecting and then hit select select all adjacent and then bang there we go so now what I want to do is take all of these and I'm going to select them together and we'll go ahead and go to my brush settings and you'll see create static mesh. If you don't see it, click on the arrow inside the brush settings and then it'll reveal that. So create static mesh and I've already got a mesh folder created and I'm going to call this my SM underscore crap car and create static mesh now it automatically converts what we had in our scene to that new piece so that's lovely but I'm gonna go ahead and open up the static mesh now as you can see we've got it in here a couple things we're gonna have to change is come down here to our general settings light map resolution 64, 128, whatever, um, and light map coordinate index, change that to 1, and we need collisions. So, cheap and easy way to do it, select collisions, and you can do like 26 DOP, and it will give us a good enough collision. If you wanted to create an individual collision itself, you can create... Um, by adding a simplified box collision and then you can shape it kind of like you did by shaping the um, BSP geometry and actually make it follow the actual contours of the vehicle but this is going to be good enough this gives us an actual collision to the vehicle so if we go in here now we have a really really big ugly vehicle and you can see the collision works we can't just jump up on top of it because we'll just kind of slide off because of the way the collision works spend as much time as you want on the collisions um, for example with that um, if you add in collision simplified box collision you can actually do the same thing click on the green lines for it and um, you can actually use your transform tools and shrink it down you can uncheck your snapping or whatever you need to and put that in there and you can actually make a full custom collision that will wrap this and work good enough but for our purposes we're going to leave it as it is close now it is a static mesh if we're trying to rig this as a skeletal mesh say if we want to put tires on here and be able to um, drive this car around then we need to have this as a skeletal mesh not a static mesh so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my static mesh I'm going to right click on it and in asset actions select export and find a location for it that is not on your desktop and not you know in some stupid location create a folder for it I already have one but create a folder just for your your test meshes and what have you you can see I've already got a bunch in here and the reason why I saved it as SM for static mesh is because I'm gonna to need to, to know that this is what it was 
I'm going to change the FBX setting to 2018. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to. Um, leave all this the same. And I'm going to select Export. Then I need to go to that folder. And there's my crap car. And I'm going to right click on it and copy it. Or I can right click, drag and drop, and copy here. There's a bunch of different ways you can copy it. And I'm going to change it so that I don't have copy in there. And I'm going to change it to SK for Skeletal Mesh Crap Car. Now what I want to do is I want to import this car into... Now you can drag it and drop it in there or you can actually click on the import button and select your folder. And it was called Test Mesh. I need SK Crap Car for skeletal mesh. So whenever I open it, I want to check the box here where it says skeletal mesh. I don't want to put a skeleton in here because we don't have one. You can look at all the other options here. Uh, I'm not really going to change anything else there. Import translation, miscellaneous, um, not changing any of that. Import textures, even though I turn this on or off, it doesn't matter. It's still going to import the materials. Um, I don't need the, the textures for it. So then just hit it, import. If you're doing multiple different pieces parts, just ignore that. Um, yeah, this is where UE4 wants to be difficult. Um... Let me get rid of all that again. Probably don't need to, but force delete. I'm gonna run through this process one more time. I'm actually gonna take the um, these two and delete them. I forgot an option there. So right click, asset actions, export. And SM crap car, that's fine. And there was an option that I forgot in here. Yep, that's fine. LOD, that's fine. No, everything was the same. Oh, well, let's just do this. Copy here. Everything else that I, I do works perfectly fine. Then I have these days where UE4 just hates me and just doesn't want to cooperate. And I'm just going to drag that in there. Same thing here. Say it's a skeletal mesh. Make sure there's nothing in here. Um, Yeah, that should be fine. Create physics asset should be checked automatically because we're going to need physics asset. Shouldn't have to. Not do anything else. Couldn't bind pose because there is no pose. I don't know why it does this sometimes. It will create um, the UCX don't need that don't need the materials because we already have those materials in this project so I'm going to delete those now in our skeleton see right now there's no material applied to it so we can go back in here and go to our static mesh or our skeletal mesh and go ahead and change them and save there we go and our skeletal mesh you see there it is click apply to asset and save 
going to do a save all. Actually, I'm going to get rid of you. I don't need you. And that's it. We have a, a skeletal mesh. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do if you're going to convert this into, if you're making, say, a car, then you're going to need to have uh, a location for your tires. So you just click right here, right click, add socket, click on that one, hit F2, and I'm going to give them temporary names, but when you're doing this, let's see, like FL for front left wheel. So front left wheel is going to be right here. It's damn near in the right spot. Same thing, right click, add socket, and F2, FR underscore wheel, put it in the correct location. For rapid prototyping, this is going to get you where you need to be. And again, add socket, F2 rear left underscore wheel close enough for government work and finally we'll add socket select it F2 RR for right rear wheel and again put it where it's supposed to go Then once you've got it uh, in position, you're all good to go, and you'll be able to save it. And it will have all your different locations there for doing that. And um, it'll be good to go. And if you need to look at it, you can actually drag it into your scene. You can use it in your blueprints. Um, see, the pivot point is in the wrong location. There are videos out there that actually show you how to change your pivot location. So um, as you're doing this, short term, I'm going to go into this folder. I'll create a, um, just a temporary blueprint. Open it up. And I can go back to my mesh. Select the um, mesh add component. And there we go. Our terrible car is in our blueprint. And you can move it around as you need to to get the body centered up. You know, you could do other things, like if you wanted to create the interior and do it separately and combine the meshes together, um, you can combine multiple ske skeletal meshes in this configuration so that um, you can create your interior, your glass, your wheel locations, um, destructible areas if you wanted to create destructible mesh sections on there. You could do whatever you want to get it into that location. But now, if I actually bring this and drop it into a scene we come over here that'll be good enough compile and save and there you go all right that's one crappy car uh, skeleton um, mesh made from a BSP geometry in a very short amount of time so what I actually can do is for my next video which will be I think on Wednesday is I can actually take this and um, delete the crap out of this ugly car and spend some more time. I'm already doing another one that is a tank but I want to do a car and do it separately. I will do the exterior of the car, I will do um, the interior of the car, the glass um, and actually make it drivable. Um, so instead of do, finishing up with the tank, tank series right now, um, I'll go ahead and just you know creating a car from scratch. Because you can actually bring in like add new features of content pack and bring in the vehicle template and add in the stuff you need to quickly get a drivable vehicle, but to also create your own meshes for it, uh, things of that nature. These, like I said. For prototyping, if you just need something to get in there to be functional until you can actually get time to build a correct model with the correct collisions and everything else, this will get you done. 
All right, guys, as I promised this weekend, um, these videos, the Monday, and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday videos are going to be short, to the point, and move along. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, drop on my Discord channel and let me know. And I will, over the next couple days, be preparing the next video for Wednesday, which should be a actual video instead of a live stream. So I will create the assets for the project, and then can upload the video. Things may change, don't know, but will definitely be a, a video on Wednesday and a video on Friday. Alright guys and gals, thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.